Hey, yeah, this is episode number 38 <laughs> with the one and only Alex Byrode. And I have to stop this thing because otherwise we're getting <laughs> a message from Ozzy. Ozzy. <laughs> Ozzy is calling. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. We had a the, the typical thing, a little issue with the sound check, but all good. So, uh, hey guys, where's the camera for tonight? I'm talking to the middle. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to have Alex back here. And um, what have you been doing since we met last year? I know, you know, not many gigs. Well, um, 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 yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> couching, uh, couch, so couching. No, actually, um, yeah, um, my, all my gigs got canceled, like, mm -hmm. uh, like everybody else. And uh, the last time I've been on stage was with uh, Alice Cooper in mm -hmm. Berlin. And the next day, we all drove home. <laughs> and since then, uh, I'm back home. And, uh, well, I started doing other things besides playing guitar. Sure. Because I had time yep. to do new things. So I started to um, play golf. <laughs> <laughs> so how good are you at pretty bad golf? pretty bad okay but you but have I have a lot of fun <laughs> and I'm back into motocross okay cool uh, and then I uh, thought it's time to do another album ah, okay yeah. and in so, the end music comes back yeah in that's your life. I think that's uh, we want to talk about this a little bit um, on this Friday the new voodoo circle album will be released mm -hmm. and uh, it's, uh, so this means this Friday, this is pre-release. We are uh, yeah. giving away hot information. Yes. Okay. First, yes. you know, first insights from Alex himself on the new release of Voodoo Circle that yes. is coming out this Friday. Yeah. Because this this album is actually recorded during Corona. Yeah. And that was a challenge. Sure. And we can talk about this <laughs> the whole night. I, I, I can imagine. I can. Imagine. Um, corona is a. It's something that changed everything. I mean, yeah. we are used to meet in person. We are used to work together. Sometimes we do stuff over the internet, but in the end, it's it's very efficient sometimes to meet and get things done in a studio, for instance. And um, how did you work with? Uh, I mean, David Reedman. I mean, yeah. it's a, a singer that I also play with sometimes in my Blueless Hendrix project. Blah, blah blah. We know David Beck. I don't know how many. You worked with him twenty years ago. You're not 20, yeah. but it yeah, so, feels like. Yeah, <laughs> similar with me. So um, he's now living in the Netherlands. Exactly. And so he recorded it. his voice. Where did he do it? He thing? recorded his vocals in the Netherlands. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's no problem. But yeah. um, he wasn't allowed to come over to Germany to do a video. Ah. Well, he, he would have been allowed, but when he got back... Yeah, quarantine. Quarantine for one week. Yeah, and this. And I said, come on, <laughs> for a video shoot, you have to be in quarantine for one week. That doesn't make any sense. So we yeah. came up with some other ideas, and the video is already uh, on YouTube. Um, but yeah, the, yeah, it's uh, the drums, for example, for yeah. this uh, album. They have been recorded in April mm -hmm. when the lockdown was really strict. The first one. Okay. Yeah. And the borders were closed, and I live in France. I know. <laughs> and so I, I was allowed to go to Germany, but not allowed to go back to France. Oh, so I was actually at home producing the drums from home, yeah. while Marcus, the drummer, yeah. Kuhlmann, yeah. Uh, was in Heidelberg yeah. in the studio. And I was connected by Cubase yeah. with a special software yeah, yeah, yeah. I know this. Like in real time I'm with the studio. And when I pushed the fader, the fader in the studio was, was moving. moving. Cool. So that was a challenge yeah. and it was uh, new. But uh, it worked. We could we could make it. Yeah. And so this is how it, it all started to yeah. record the drums. I'm in France, the drummer in in Germany. Yeah. About about France, I remember when the the, the, the strict lockdown, the first one happened. You know, we are living here right next on the border. Yeah. So it's I like I mean you live like 20 minutes away from here yes. or 15. Yeah. And uh, you know I'm it's it's five minutes basically to the border. And uh, I do my push bike riding, and then when it was really strict, the river Saar, where we live, is, cr is crossing the border. Yeah, I know. So I had a special paper that states that I'm just exercising for fun, and I'm having no contact with anybody, just me, my bike, and fresh air. Okay, so signed off to the French whatever 
um, special department of yeah. uh, health yeah. and bullshit. And I'm happy that this time the lockdown is way easier. I mean, you know, they, they are not so freaky in that. Or uh, actually, I'm not allowed to be here. Okay. Also, it's totally so, illegal. Well, I mean, we are all <laughs> illegal. Okay. Because there is a lockdown in France, you have to be home at six o'clock. Okay. So we when I later go back home, I'm illegal. <laughs> Uh, well, but I don't care. <laughs> okay, that's that's very cool. Okay, yeah, hey, nobody has a problem about. We are just friendly people. Anyway, um, so you recorded the drums, like kind of being connected mm -hmm. um, with Markus Kuhlmann uh, in the studio, and it, it was kind of a, a live audio stream to your Cubase. Yes. Uh, Cubase, what is the number now? Ten. Uh, ten. Ten something. Ten point something. Yeah. yeah. I worked on Cubase. Back in the days, on I think six. If you list, look at the list of names, I'm there. Okay, I'm, good job. Yeah, <laughs> good job. Yeah, I mean this goes. Back. I love Cubase. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. I mean, well, um, being involved in the whole thing, then you learn how it works. I mean, there's other great software programs too. But yeah, sure. I, I grew up with it, so. To me, as a guitar player, <laughs> Cubase is easy to understand. Good one. And yeah. uh, I love it. I just, yeah. I'm a big fan. Yeah. So. Then you had some drums, you had some vocals, and who played the bass and or how? Ah, the bass, uh, Matt Sinner, my longtime yeah. friend from Stuttgart, uh, sure. plays the bass. Also, he recorded in his studio, and uh, yeah. So mm. it was basically everyone was at home, but the, the situation with the drums were kind of tricky. Yeah, yeah. Mm, okay, oh, maybe a word about Matt Sinner. He's kind of the mastermind behind very many projects. The, the, the Rock Meets Classic? The Rock Meets Classic, uh, um, yeah, project. He's uh, the musical director and he, he puts the whole thing together um, where we play with Alice Cooper, yeah. Ian Gillen, Steve Lukather, uh, Paul Rogers, yeah. all these. And them all, the big names. Big names. Yeah. Um, and I'm really happy I can do this. I'm on yeah. stage with those guys. It's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. And also, um, I play in Primal Fear, yeah. where, where Matt is also. Um, doing all the stuff, songwriting yeah. and management and playing bass. Yeah. And all it all started in 1988 when I joined Sinner. Yeah. Sinner was in 1988 one of the top 10 uh, German heavy metal bands and that was my step into the mm. professional music business. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Still alive and Still kicking. Still alive yeah, and mean, kicking, yeah. I, mean, I think that, that's a big point, you know. <laughs> um, you know, stepping into the music business is a, a, a funny thing. Sometimes it's hard and sometimes it just happens. Um, the next uh, problem you have is stay in there. And after a couple of years, you have no choice anymore. <laughs> That's how, how do I get out there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is no way out. No, you know? no of course it, not. You made a deal with the devil, yeah. and, which means like this is what you do for the rest of your life. And I hope you do something that you can still provide even when you get older yeah. I mean you know I have friends and I mean even fam famous people like uh, Steve Morse who is a killer guitar player but I mean the way he practiced all his life I think his hand is now suffering he, he, yeah I know and in and, and this I mean sometimes I use that as an excuse not, not to practice that much so for me the point is um, of course, on the one hand, we all want, want to play fast and, and do the flashy stuff. But on the other hand, is sometimes it's good to be, you know, not too too keen on overdoing stuff and 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 treat yourself nicely. It comes with the age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, yeah, when you're 20, um, probably also your body can take more. But if you play or if you write songs that are hard to play when you grow older. You have a problem if Absolutely. you if you play sweet melodies, slow style, and hit the right notes. That's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah. So I, th I think that's also something that I noticed because when I was younger, doing my own uh, solo albums, I always put in like one thing that I wanted to practice. Kind of, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah. Uh, th there's one little uh, run or something that I w usually wouldn't play, but if it's part of the song I have to have to yeah and people are expecting it they're waiting for it absolutely and yeah. these parts are tricky now <laughs> I, I hear you <laughs> <laughs> you know all that shit yeah anyway um, cool. good so what's the trick on this album I mean um, the band we, we talked about the band 
Um, and of course, here are all the beautiful people in the band. There's no <laughs> Photoshop used on this cover ever. Ever, never. <laughs> I, I can tell. I mean, David looks just like 40. How old is he? He's 24. <laughs> yeah, 24. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. And um, cool. Ah, it is a... Um, um, what is it called? Diggy pack Digipack, special? Yeah. yeah, with a, a special sleeve. And on the side, we have the booklet with all the lyrics. I guess Mr. Reedman was writing this. Or? Actually, I wrote two uh, songs. Two, uh, two, lyrics. Song, two lyrics. Cool. And I always say it's not Hemingway, but it works with the song. <laughs> <laughs> I know that David's lyrics is also not Hemingway. The best thing about David is, I remember. Okay, this story I have to tell. When we recorded our Blue Place Hendrix live DVD, we played Karlsruhe. This was the town that David was living in for, at the time. For many, many, many yeah. years. This was 2010. So we went on stage. We only had one gig before that, uh, which was in a club nearby here. This was kind of our official rehearsal. The, the, the story was even harder because Raoul Walton, the bass player, that... Uh, was prepared for the gig, got sick. I had to bring him to hospital. Oh. So he was sick. I needed a bass player overnight, which, me which meant, fuck, who do I call? So I called Reggie Worthy because he's kind of into Hendrix anyhow. So I sent him all the, the tracks with the special arrangements we've done. Okay. He learned the tracks while driving down from all the way north Germany to, to here. Karlsruhe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to Karlsruhe. He came there, and then we played the songs, all good. And then in the middle of the concert, everything on camera, eight cameras, whatever, recording live. David had like a little blackout. He was singing the wrong lyrics to the wrong song. To the wrong song, yeah. even to the wrong song. Yeah. And we are talking about Voodoo Child or something. <laughs> I mean, a song that everybody knows. And it was like, he was so convinced that he's uh, um, singing the right thing. Um, song, and he didn't notice. So then, then I, I was looking, uh, I mean, a bit funny, angry, or whatever. It's like, hey, David, and you know, the band was still playing. Dong, chuck, dong, dong, chuck. And I go, when I'm standing next to a mountain, I tap it down with the edge of my hand. Ah! And then he, uh, he got the lyrics, and the moment he got the lyrics, he was singing it totally properly, and the audience gave a special round of applause. Aha, see? So, and later on, when we edited the DVD, of course, no editing, no, we cut out all the wrong parts, which was like a loop that was wrong, me explaining it, and then it was like the f fucking brilliant intro into the first verse with an extra round of applause <laughs> for the correct <laughs> lyrics. <laughs> ah, you know? And That's then, cool. So, I mean, this, this was one of those magic moments. But you have to be... Bold and stick, no, don't stop it. This is a live DVD. It's it's now or never. And we, I wouldn't have stopped the band. I would tell them we play until we have something that we can edit to have a final version. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's yeah, my little yeah. story here. Yeah. Um, Voodoo Circle. Um, what are your influences on this album? Well, Voodoo Circle is based on bands like uh, Deep Purple, Rainbow, Whitesnake, Jimi Hendrix, and maybe Ingvi Malmsteen, and Led Zeppelin. Yeah. And th those are the, uh, the, the, the roots of Voodoo Circle. And we never wanted to invent the wheel, reinvent the wheel, <laughs> invent, reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Big difference. Yeah. Um, we just wanted to have fun and write songs in this direction because yeah. those bands they don't exist anymore, or they don't play don't play anymore, or not alive. they don't have it anymore, whatever, yeah. or yeah. they are already dead. Yeah, and uh, this is the, this is the concept. And right. every Voodoo Circle album is a little bit different. Sometimes it's a little bit more uh, White Snake, a little bit more Led Zeppelin, a little bit more Hendrix, mm -hmm. more Malmsteen. And uh, on on this album, we want to sound like a like. Jimmy Page on steroids. <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, for, like, something like this. Yeah. And Robert Plant and Jimmy Page yeah. on steroids. And there's a huge Led Zeppelin influence on this album. And the, the critics are amazing so far. Yeah. The album right now is uh, number one 
in the in Amazon best hard rock bestseller cool. albums. Um, so we have high hopes for the for the official album Release. charts yeah. next week. Cool. And uh, yeah, mm. that's that's the idea. Talking about Led Zeppelin. Mm. In the last episode, I was talk t um, talking about um, um, CD or uh, LP releases that are 50 years old. So Led Zeppelin released Zeppelin IV, like 1971, which is like now um, 50 years ago. Zeppelin. And there's a little things about Zeppelin is, you know, we can jam a lot, but if you play Zeppelin songs, there are a few parts that you should know. Otherwise, you fuck them up big time. So here's an example from Led Zeppelin 4. The, the first thing is sometimes the discussion about rock and roll, how to count in the drums. It's like da 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 but the point is, um, some, some drummers, I played it with many different drummers. Me too. Uh, some drummers, they count everything and they copied everything without understanding the phrase. You know, it's like, okay. So I'm always waiting for, one, two, three, four. I'm always waiting for that. That's clear. But some, some guys simply started and, and you have no clue. You, I, I'm waiting for the last four. Yeah. I'm, and sometimes they do something different and then you don't get it. But it is a very simple thing. It's a Chuck Berry very, riff. It's a guitar riff, actually. Yeah. And if you properly count it in, it's one and two and three and. And the end is the starting point. One, two, three, da 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 The trick that I always use is like I, I before the da da dum I, I do one da da dum da da dum da da dum dum dum. That's the way I can remember what to do with it. But when you listen to the recording, I believe there's a little edit because yes. the song it's, is kind of slow in the beginning, and it's not hundred percent in. It's I think they were just looking at each other. Sure, <laughs> like this. old school. Yes, but I mean. That's the thing about Led Zeppelin. They managed to interact with the drums and the guitar like no other band. So when, when I listen to Zeppelin, I can hear the rhythmic thinking of Bonzo in the guitar riffs and vice versa. So it, it, this is always, um, to me, so exciting to see how uh, Zeppelin does um, riffs because they are not that straight. It's, no, it's, no, it's tricky. Yeah, it's tricky. And here's another one that I, I noticed when I played with the orchestra, which was the... So, when you come back from the... This needs to be the second chord. If you start with the wrong chord, everything it's is falling apart. Yeah. Okay, that's another one. So, you know, when I see a band cover that, I know where the spots are. I have to watch that spot on. They know the song, and it's like, okay, guys, no, you don't know it. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the uh, that's the uh, Zeppelin element. Do we have tricky stuff like that on the no. album? No, <laughs> you're no. clever. I mean, we don't do tricky stuff. <laughs> You go with your energy and with your natural flow. Yeah, it's it's, it's classic rock and yeah. it's it's meant to be fun. Yeah, and uh, the people love it. It's it's great. We have a great fan base, and uh, I'm really looking forward to Friday to the release of the album. Mm -hmm. And and by the way, the whole album is recorded with this little thing. With the M1 Iridium. Yes. 
cool. There's, so, so, there's also a story behind it. Well, tell, tell the story. Well, <laughs> when I started uh, um, to write the songs, right. I usually take care, I play the guitars already in the quality so I can use it later sure. on, on, on the album. Yeah. And so I wrote the songs in about two years and when it came to the point to start recordings, I got this little thing from you. <laughs> and I started to, to work with it and then I got the, the Ox Universal Oxbox. Mm -hmm. And man, you know I'm a Marshall guy. I know you, yeah, sure. And you've been an official Marshall guy. I'm an guy. official Marshall guy. Yeah. And I love Marshall to death. Mm -hmm. And I hate Kemba. <laughs> you said it. And I'm not, I'm not afraid to say it. I hate Kemba. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's not the point. Um, so I started to, to, to set it up and to start playing. And at the end, I recorded the whole album again. again. Because the sound was so good. I keep saying... You know, I worked in Los Angeles at the Goodnight LA studio right. with Keith Olsen. Yeah. Keith Olsen, he worked with Rick Springfield. He made the White Snake 87 album. He did yeah. Scorpions, yeah. Food Huge Blues. Guy, yeah. In the 80s, he was like, Keith Olsen was that guy. Yeah. I swear to God, I have the best guitar sound with this setup in my studio. It's, it's like Goodnight LA studio. I've been in Visselord studio yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Hilversum, yeah, you know, know. it. Yeah. Rolling Stones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Police, everybody. Police, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. This is, to me, this is a, a match made in heaven. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, you know me for, for a while and I had my silver one out and I never thought that you would be the kind of guy for the silver one. I knew that. I mean, this, this also does a great job, especially for me. But, you know, when I got the, um, when I got the black one, I thought, you know, give it a try. I mean, you know. Sometimes yeah. people are not happy when they try something new, and it's okay. I, I don't mind. You know, I'm happy for everybody that is uh, happy with the sound, and no matter what brand, no matter what product. And so it's you know, for me it was like, okay, give it to Alex, see what happens. And then when you called me, it's like he you made it kind of a bit, a bit tension. It's like, hey, I really have to tell you something. And I said, now comes the shit. It's like, <laughs> hey, you know, the black one is really damn. Sh and then, and then you started to rave about it. Yeah. Okay, okay, you know, all good. Um, but for me, the, the big point is uh, you are the, the, the heavier side of the Marshalls. I'm more the vintage side of yeah, the yeah. Marshall sure. is, is, is kind of uh, my DNA as well, but I'm more the vintage guy. And, and I'm so happy that, uh, I mean, you, you like that because uh, you use the classic channel, of course, it's similar DNA, but it... The way, I mean, I can hear and I can hear it on the album. It sounds killer. You, you want to play anything from the album? Yeah, we can listen. Whenever, whenever my laptop is just back out of standby, <laughs> we can. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We can, uh, of course. It's so like a typical. Yeah.
Got a oh. question are you aware of the mode you are using like the scale with this like I, you know I, I'm self-taught so yeah. I, I don't know about all these stuff I of course I know all the notes and everything yeah, yeah, okay but I'm self-taught and I have not so much um, knowledge about musical theory yeah so the answer is no. <laughs> okay, but it's, I mean, you, you, know, you, you cherish the sound of that scale, so you kind of know. I mean, um, of course, maybe you don't know the description. This is a, a, a sharp four or, or, whatever. Yeah, or low green scale or whatever. Um, okay, so you don't know that, but no. you are using it. Yeah. And sounds good. Killer. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I mean, some people would be proud uh, to, to use that kind of scale. And, you know, the... the Led Zeppelin is one of the first bands that started that kind of thing. And then, of course, um, in the instrumental world, Joe Satriani is kind of a, mm. a guy that's learned that and you can tell that. But there's so many players that use that thing and they have no meaning. And this is what I hate. If people understand the theory and in, in the practical aspect of music, it doesn't get my emotion. Well, I think that's an advantage if you are self-taught because you, uh, it does not everyone, right? Yeah. But you do it with a little bit more intention and in emotion. And I mean, I, I've seen this uh, when we tour with Rock Meets Classic and the, the orchestra, you take sure. them away the notes, the nothing, uh, the, the sheets, <laughs> the sheet. not the notes, the yeah. sheets, then it's like... End, end, of, end of it. That's uh, it. Yeah, I know. And uh, but we go, you know, we rock and we can yeah. rock forever. Sure, because we we, we use have it in the ears. We, we we improvise. We have it in the ear. We have our own imagination. We come up with ideas. Yeah. And on the other hand, it's also if you are not well, if you are kind of a little bit disabled in a way, you have to compensate. And that yeah. kind of compensation I know what you mean. makes you stronger. Yeah. And I'm self-taught myself too. I took a few lessons um, at the jazz guy and it didn't last. It, it lasted for three lessons. I mean, one. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and after this, I was, I, I hated jazz and the guy and whatever. But at least he taught me some scales, which I was very happy afterwards. But I didn't get the full uh, music theory. I, I just got snippets and... Uh, so I'm still thank thankful for the thing, but uh, on the other hand, um, trying to to create your own style out of these snippets yeah. made for my character yeah, even exactly, more. Exactly. Yeah, and I think you have exactly. the same experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this this puts you in the position where you actually can be creative, create albums, write music, and do stuff. Other people is like. Um, they're never sure if something is important or if it's right or maybe it's right on the theory level but you have the final decision is your emotion and if you don't know what you're doing your emotion is is what's the last uh, instance uh, yeah yeah I know yeah. I know what yeah. you mean I know what you mean uh, you know I was touring with Steve Lukasa for yeah. two tours so I played like 50 shows with him <clears throat> and he has a lot of knowledge. A lot of knowledge. Sure. American jazz player. He, I mean, he's, too, he's yeah. the guy, but he also has the chops. And yeah, I mean, yeah. He's, he's... Big balls. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. sure. He said once, he said to me, Alex, you know, there is no such thing than wrong notes. And then he showed me what he meant. And, and it was, yeah, fuck, you can play every single note oh. in the key of A. Yeah. And, and it's right yeah, if yeah. you just do it on the right way. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have I have that, that same lesson sometimes when I teach people is it's, it's the same because um, if if you end that that's actually a title of um, Steve Lukasa when it ends well everything is well yeah great album yeah love that album yeah and and so I mean if you play a phrase like in a, uh, in, in E for instance okay I have a the Hendrix chord the Hendrix chord let's do a little music theory here. <laughs> the Hendrix chord yeah it, it's a it's a major third and it's like a a minor third. It's a 
It's a total weird chord. Yeah. So, I'm allowed to play major because of that, and I'm also allowed to play minor because of that. So, so. you find the right note how to end, I can play bullshit. I call this the bullshit. That this is just the symmetrical thing uh, for exercise the fingers. Let's exercise the fingers. Let's start on A downwards, just for fun. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Darkest bullshit we can play over <laughs> such a chord, and the, the only thing is like find a good ending and it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this is uh, the, the, my lesson here is don't be afraid to play wrong notes because yeah. there's not such a thing. Th there is not there such is. a thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, okay. Um, what about uh, other songs on the album? Do we have do we have a ballad or do we have I, I don't know. Oh or, yeah. Or another song you are proud of. Uh, all of them. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> all of them. But um, I, I, uh, well, I have a nice ballad. Let's go to this one. And I'm sure you will understand immediately where this is coming from. My mistake. Yeah. Yeah. 
Cool. And I, I have a first take solo on this one. Okay. Yeah, maybe you can listen to this. Yeah, why not? If I can find it. Let's see. Just let's let it run. Yeah, so I, I tried to redo it, I could, but I couldn't. No, I mean... Because the feeling was it, just the, right, And you know? this is what it was all about. So, it, man, this is like, and it's all that the song needs. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. What are your settings when you go with the Iridium? Just to let people know, is there any specific thing that you are using or...? Mm. Well, I use a lot the classic yeah. and, the, and the modern mm -hmm. channel. That Those are the main channels I use. And I don't know, if, do we have a camera for this? We or? actually do have a camera, yeah, yeah. Um, it's in the picture. Ah, treble on three, middle on six, bass on eight, gain on ten, one of fours. <laughs> and yeah, and that's it. That's, yeah. that's, that's basically it. And, and the pickups in your guitar right now or in general? Oh, this is, uh, um, yeah, this is my, my, my main strat. This is mm. a, a little screaming demon from Seymour Duncan. Okay. And in the, in my, my Bach, Bach. that's Paul. Yeah. Um, I have um, Sua DAs. Okay. Yeah. And this this guitar is the main guitar on the album, actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I played that guitar and it was uh, not too heavy. I like. No, that. no, no. I mean, this is like uh, three point five kilograms. Yeah, it's just a strat. You yeah. Know? <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, it's, uh, every Maybach guitar is uh, 3.5, yeah. 3.6, not not more. That's cool. Really cool. Really good guitars. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, what else? Do we have any questions about the album at this point? I don't know. There's one. Um, has Alex tried also the blue box instead of the ox? Yes, you tried, but you preferred the ox. Yeah, because I already bought it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tried the blue box and I, I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. And actually, I wanted to ask you if I can have one when I go back on tour. Because I don't want to carry fix, carry yeah. this thing around. This, I want this to leave in the studio. Right. And I, um, we tried the blue box uh, sure. several times. Also, we made a video when I did uh, uh, um, other stuff in mm -hmm. my in my studio. We used it, and I like it. It's it's really really good. I have to say. And, and what is what is the ox um, settings that you are using? I mean, oh, this uh, because it sounds killer. Let us know. Uh, you know what you are using there yeah so uh camera done this is uh, that's it what we what, uh, i mean <laughs> that's uh vintage 30s that's it yeah yeah and uh a dynamic uh, sm a sure uh, sm57 right. and, and ripen 121 Okay, and that's that, uh, and, and a 50-50 balance of both mics. Yeah, so that that's my main rhythm sound on the album. And the cabinet is oversized, is it? Or is no, it, no, no, no. standard one. No, this is the standard one. Ah, okay. But there are there are options. Options, many options. Just my laptop is 
Greasy. Greasy. <laughs> Favorites. Oh, user. Yeah, here's, here's one. Pick and flush. What is this? Wait a second. Ah, done. Here. That's that's the, the Steve Steve Lucas. Uh. Yeah, that's already with chorus. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you have so many many things here. Double thick. What's that? Sounds cool. <laughs> Yeah. So, it, you have plenty of options, and I, I yeah. just love it. Can you I go back for it. for the one that we just heard? Because I, I kind of like the combination a lot. Yes. Wait a second. Ah, uh, here. Hey, cool. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, for me, um, I also had some phase where I was influenced by Led Zeppelin for a while um, with my German singing band. Uh, not many people know that I had a, a three piece called Dreist with German lyrics. And this band um, was, of course, similar like yours, but a bit more vintagey again. Vintage <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so we had a lot of Hendrix, but we also had some Zeppelin and, and uh, other influences. But the, 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 the key thing about that band was German lyrics with um, a lot of, um, I think, meaningful lyrics. And uh, the singer actually had some stories I was so fascinated about that I said, you know, we have to create a band about That's it. Cool. And um, as I usually do it, every guy that comes in the band that is a singer and plays the guitar, I make him the bass player. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, did the same thing to Pete as well. So we ended up um, having a free piece with a guitar player playing the bass. He was left, ah, I took my guitar, still the same. And wait a minute, there's some pictures. Maybe you can see, uh, this is too small. Back in those days, we actually opened up for the Purple Ones on a uh, Daytona festival in La, and uh, I was I was working with all kinds of 50 watt marshals and you know the real deal. I wanted to know how it feels and have uh, you know we played little pop gigs with no power soak. Yeah. I did it. I did you know the plexi without. A master volume. I did it. You know, the singer Pete was yelling at me. It's like, hey man, can you crank it down? I don't hear anything. Said, yeah, I have to be authentic. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Everybody's suffering. <laughs> but, you know, and I, I had a, 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 at the beginning, I was so, it was so hard to tame a plexi. You know, a, a, a plexi amp with no game and no pedals is like, crank it up and there's too much dynamics. You know, so for me, but this was a good way to learn how yeah. to, to yeah. dig in and, and really, you know, get the energy behind the strings to make, you know, the whole thing sound right. Yeah. Anyway, and now I'm so happy to have my plexi with the master volume and I'm not missing anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most people know that I have a big collection of those and A, B comparisons and it's nothing missing. And just whoop, reduce the volume. Hey guys, if you would suffer like playing a real plexi, m many people talk about plexis, but they've never played, played one. one. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And in the studio is one thing because you can still have a mic and go to the other room. But like having the real stage experience is like physical. It's like it's, it's pain, <laughs> painfully. Yeah. yeah, it's painfully. Yeah. So yeah. I've so, been should there. Should we do some some questions? Oh yes, sure. I see there are some things going on. Okay, we have also some questions from last episode, but now let's check ah, these. Okay. Um, 
Sean, Samuel, which strings is Alex using on that stretch board? Oh, that's, th those are actually uh, my own strings. Um, I, I have a, uh, I work with Pyramid. Pyramid, yeah, pyramid, pyramid, yeah. pyramid yeah. strings yeah. from Germany. <laughs> yeah. And they have uh, Alex Byrod set. And it's called Virtuoso. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and another one is called Relentless. And um, what, what is the gauge of the strings? Actually, since I play in so many different bands and projects, um, I have to go through different tunings. Yeah. And my most favorite gauge is um, from 8 to 46. 8? It's very thin. That's and 46 is like 10. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a mix. Mm -hmm. I stole that from Ingmi Malmsteen and it works to me, it works amazing. Okay. But when I play with Primal Fear, yeah. for example, we tune one step down, down, not a half step, like one step in 2D. I need thicker strings, yeah. otherwise, it's, yeah, it's right? not so, enough. But I, I still have a nine. Okay. But I have a very heavy bass strings. Yeah, with, which is then 52? Yeah, or something, something like oh, this. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So well. this is why I came up with these different mm -hmm. uh, um, sets. Yeah. So and these you can buy them everywhere in the internet, even in my shop, everywhere. Okay. So, Fabio. Alex, for you. Spielst du den Amp One auch live? Benutzt du dann auch ein Cabinet und welche Effekte? I, I translate. So, Alex is asking, uh, no, it's a question from Fabio to Alex. Are you playing the Amp One uh, also live? Are you using um, effects, a, a cabinet, of course, a, a real cabinet, and which effects? So there was a lot of COVID going on since you have the amp. So there were not that many live gigs. Actually, that's true. But the, the, my intention when I when 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 we uh, when I Met, got it from yeah. you, my my first intention was to use uh, the amp for fly fly like, shows. Yeah. When I fly with Primal Fear to Barcelona, yeah. Helsinki, uh, Moscow, to play festivals. I, I, I became tired of always using the festival marshal because they are never maintained right. And um, it was like... Uh, surprise, surprise. Yeah, surprise, surprise. I didn't want to ha have the camper because yeah. I hate it. Did I mention that? <laughs> uh, and I'm very serious about it. <laughs> um, so I needed some, something else. And so I thought, why don't give this whole th setup a try? a try? And I, I tr the first time I tried it was in my garage. Okay. With a 4x12 Marshall mm -hmm. cabinet, yeah. I, I, I was already blown away. Okay. I was like, Jesus, this thing yeah. is loud. Yeah. And it sounds great. Um, and to go back to the question, yes, I used it live already. Mm -hmm. um, and back in the, in the summer, yeah, I just remember, back yeah. in the summer, the co corona was not so bad. I, yeah. I played uh, a few gigs, a few cover gigs yeah. here in our area. And I used it. Yeah. And I, it worked great with the nano cap. Ah, okay. And and, uh, and which effects have you been using? Uh, a Boss DD7. Okay. A Guitar Slinger Booster. RB Booster RB1011. Yeah. Uh, that's it, basically. Uh, Univibe uh, and a war pedal. And a so uh, yeah. not not much. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's, okay. that's it. Yeah. Cool. Next question, David Matei. How many guitars Alex used for this album, on the Voodoo Circle album? How many guitars? Uh, uh, many, many. Uh, between 12 or 15. Okay. Are you like uh, double tracking guitars, rhythm guitars? Actually... What, what is the procedure? Usually I do four. And you pen them left yes, and right? Yes, I pen them do left and right and a and little and bit... Ah, okay. So you have two like extreme yeah. and then some like 75%. Something ah, yeah, like this, yeah, yeah, so. but there's one song on the album. I, I'm, I have six rhythm guitars, all playing the same, and four melodies up on top of yeah. it. It's like a wall of sound. Yeah, sure. And uh, yeah, I, I just like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a typical thing when you record this type of music in the studio because it just sounds so good. Yeah. I mean, it, back in the days. Uh, Pop bands like ABBA used that. Even the Beatles did double track vocals and stuff. Um, and that that is how to you to get this wall of sound. Sound. This was when when I was at uh, I just mentioned it earlier. Back in '95, I think I was in Los Angeles uh, working with Keith Olsen at the Good Night LA studio. 
and he recorded the 1987, uh, the 87 album of White Snake, and he played us the original tapes. Wow, one of those moments. Yeah, you sit there with a glass of wine, like, <laughs> oh holy my God. Christ, yeah, this is it. I mean, this is where it all happened, and he played, and and then of course we listened to the tracks. Yeah, and there were there were six rhythm guitars. It's right. like ah okay, instead of four, maybe I could do six, <laughs> you know. And uh, yeah, it was this lesson. Yeah, exactly. Cool. I have read uh, another question. Does the recording output have some sort of power soak, or is it somehow lowering the power of the amp? Well, you have to understand the concept of the recording out. The recording out on the amp one is at the speaker output. It's kind of where the speaker output comes. This is where we tap a line signal and then we have a built-in speaker simulation that you can also switch off. So you can use the aux or you can use whatever, the blue box, so you are free. Um, the question here is, does the recording output have some sort of power soak? The, the, the power amp stage in both M1s, they are using a new technology which is a combination of nanotube and class D that reacts sounds and feels like a real tube amp. This is what you, experience in the garage yeah if and if it's not the thing it sounds like a camper <laughs> and this is what you don't like <laughs> anyway it has a lot to do also with the power amp the preamp is also another thing but if if the power amp is not the real deal you don't feel it and i know the, the kind of player like you are it's about balls of steel yeah exactly <laughs> or as ola england in the metal world would say will it chuck you know yeah so yeah. and and it it needs to have that kind of interaction. And this technology that I'm using here is not needing any power soak. I do have a power soak just for the sake of showing the world that I can do exactly the same stuff like a traditional valve amp with a power soak is doing, but it's not needed and it's not used. If you want to access it, you need a remote one or MIDI, and then you can tame the amp down to 150 milliwatts and blah, 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 all that thing. But that's something, simply forget about it. The amp sound as, it's, as it is, it sounds great at any volume and it's nothing is needed, nothing is broken. You can just uh, unplug the speaker out, you can get, and the, the amp survives. That's, it's a new technology, so don't nothing to worry. Okay, we have more questions. Osmium Studios, is there a, feature that you would like to be added on Amp1 Iridium? Is this a question for me or Alex? <laughs> Probably uh, Alex. I mean, what is the feature that you, you would uh, like? Ah, the feature. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would like to have yeah. my boost. <laughs> and, and you're not using the internal boost, so you only want no, your no, boost. No, no. Uh, honestly, I use both. Ah, okay. Um, I loved your boost. Mm -hmm. I love it. I use it a lot. Yeah. And it sounds a little bit different than my booster. Sure, absolutely. My booster, I think, is a little bit more thick. And, and yours is a little bit more focused. It, focused. Yeah. That's the right word. Yeah. Focused. Yeah. And I, I mean, I have one of yours as well, and it's killer. And I used it in a couple of episodes here. And it's like we both share the, the, the love for Richie Blackmore and his yeah. tones. And... Um, the way, you know, I personally have a full room full of boosters because I like them all, you know. This one is good for this, this, the next one is good for another. Uh, and yours is very transparent and it thickens the tone in a natural way. And it, it's killer to, um, to turn down the volume. It's, it's very up. dynamic yeah. and there is no hum. There's yeah. no noise. Yeah, it's, it's super really clean. It's unbelievable. I mean... Yeah, that's it. And how it's much? Full on. Yeah. It's full yeah, on. It's full on, and the booster is on on full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice. It's <laughs> yeah. For example, we have a request. If I can uh, use that boost on mine, of here, course, 
And um, you want this one? Yes, yeah, sure. I don't know. Is mine somewhere in the room, or is it in the? I have an. Uh, or is it downstairs? I think it's downstairs. No problem. Doesn't matter. Okay, give me yours, and I. I just need power. No, I have, ah, you, you have everything. Okay, so I plug in my guitar on the input, and I put in. Is there a battery in there? Yes. Ah, even more comfortable. Nice. <laughs> nice, yeah. It's always good to have a battery backup. Absolutely. You know, professional players know you have to function on stage. And if there's a problem, nobody is interested in what's your problem. And helping you. Yeah. So you are there, you be you need to be the rock star because you are paid to be it. Yeah. And you better have a tone or have better a signal. Yeah. You like, know? hey, five minutes till showtime and your uh, and your gear doesn't work because the, the, the power supply is wrong or Yeah. No, so no, no. I always have batteries. So let let me start. This is this is my vintage channel. Okay guys, this is my thing now. So this is how I use it. The natural old school Marshall plexi tone, and this is like giving me more boost. And then when I reduce the volume on the guitar, it's like a sparking. Yeah, and sparkling. Yeah. And then when I crank it, Killer. Um, I can compare it to the internal boost, which is slightly different, just to, to show you. Again, because I like the clarity. Yours is even cleaner. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just um, we, we can do an AB thing, uh, which put the guitar on three and full. So, three. Now I go on yours. More sparkle. Yeah. And now, similar, yeah. but even cleaner in yeah. a way. Yeah. Yes, yeah. nice. So I would say mine is a bit more um, woodier in a way, mm -hmm. and yours is a bit more open. Open, yeah, yeah but exactly. It's, hey, I love it. It's, exactly. it's fantastic. And, you know, there is a lot of shitty boosts out there, and this is a high quality boost, not only from the noise, also from the tone. Yeah. And so, I'm a fan of that. Yeah. yeah. Good. So, next question. Um, Stefan Hardekopf, hi. Could you please try to recreate Alex Ox sound with the blue box? Okay. Um, we, we, we did that. We uh, did something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty close. I think it's it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, shall we have a quick one just to try? But then I need a similar guitar. Yeah, or you we should play we my guitar. We, we swapped the guitar. Okay. Yeah. Then. Uh, and okay, I play I'm the sound designer, so I make the whole thing. You give me. Wait a second. Okay, you plug me into yours, Rick. I oh, know. Uh, I don't need that uh, because that's my rig. So I'm plugged into yours. Yeah. Okay. Didn't so, change anything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have no... Ah. But I give it a try. Can I get the input, uh, the guitar, please? So I go straight into my setup. And then, of course, I try uh, the... Thank <laughs> you. 
mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's towards. It's just yeah, but for 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 a quick. Okay, you have different high end. I, yeah. Oops. Okay, I have one more go with the with the sizzle high. The sizzle high. Because I know I can get this from the custom control. So let's listen to it. close yeah i mean yeah. for you know and i didn't change even the cabinet no so. you could, could go to all the cabinets now to find one but uh, i mean this this has its character and it's killer i love I, 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 <laughs> there's something about your strings man <laughs> telling you yeah <laughs> Just buy Alex strings and become Alex Byward. <laughs> Wait a second, I have. A, can I move with this little thing here or try? Tr try? Ah. Yeah, try. Maybe you can get it out out of my my bag and my 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 gig bag. The, the There's gig a pair of strings. Let's show it. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. It, um, the gig bag is it's outside. In the, the next room. Uh, in the next room, room. next door. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Our camera team Making is these guys nuts. Yeah. I don't care. So, oh, I like the humbucker here, I have to say. <laughs> ah, so it's 08, 11, 14, 22. 14 and 22, that's... That's weird. That's weird, I know. Yeah. 32 is a classic and 46 is a classic too, yeah. what I'm using. Ah, let me try. Sometimes helps to. Hey, super, super cool. Okay, we have uh, another question here, and I have a few questions from last. Uh, let's check that we don't get lost. Um, Alberto Piccioni. Sounds very Italian to me. I'm getting Ciao. Ciao, Alberto. Ciao. Yeah, tutto va bene. Um, pronto. Historic guitarists are set to achieve their tone mainly from cranking their tube amps all the way up. That's correct. If um, we have um, no problems cranking M1 all the way up. We are recording at PC, for example. Um, what's the difference in cranking all Torx, all Torx, the master volume, and lowering the channels? Ah, volume versus raising channels, volume and the master volume. Okay, this is two questions in one. Um, the first thing is um, he wants to know what happens when I crank the M1. Um, I give you this back. I go back for my setup here and I show you what's going on. So, the first thing is uh, I need to be plugged in. Ah, your booster is back for you. Um, so, I this is me using the uh, Mercury. Now with single coils, but actually... Okay, sounds cool. Um, so, now what I can do is I will lower the volume on the blue box. Maybe you can see that with the camera. There's a sensitivity switch. And I was on high, which means the blue box is sensitive. And now I go in the middle position, less volume, and low, less volume. So now I can crank. This is now the power amp, and it's getting woody. I put it in the middle, so we have. Uh, I know 
it's e extreme, but this is how the power amp zagging and the compression gets going. My, my hint is try to find a sweet spot. Yeah. Try to find a spot where it matches the amount of gain you have from the input stage. You know, if you have a lot of gain from the input, you don't need that much from, from the power amp stage. No. It, just a tiny it little sounds, bit. And it sounds different. Yeah. It yeah. sounds totally different. Yeah. So the vintage guy, and this is what um, he's um, uh, telling, is like in the old days you had to crank your amps, and some of the most beautiful sounds that I like have been created like that. But if you, you have always have to find the sweet spot. If you, the more preamp gain you have, the less power amp saturation you should have, kind of. Yeah. And then it depends on your taste in how much muddiness you want. I mean, it's getting muddier and muddier the more you crank it. And it getting less muddy the more you, the, the, uh, your amp is, is clean. Like, like this, it's, it's like... When, when the amp is clean, the power amp can be saturated, but when the amp is overdriven channel, then less power amp saturation. And no worries, the amp one can handle this. It's designed to be able to do that. Ah uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so we have a few more uh, questions. Osmium students, these guys, they are experts. By the way, they are every episode they ask questions. I know this is a bit out of topic, but what is your favorite neck single coil pickup that you can buy at the market right now? Please answer both of you. Okay, what's your favorite neck pickup on the strat? Uh, on the a uh, neck pickup. If you ask me, it's the bridge. What's no problem, but the neck pickup, I think this one is a DiMarcio yeah. uh, HS2. Okay. I think. But um, in my other strat, I, I use the Seymour Duncan's, the, the, the Malmsteen set. Mm -hmm. the, all three of them. And that's, I really like that one. You like that? Yeah. It has a little bit more, uh, bit more output, punch. a yeah. little bit more output than the DiMarcio. And so. To answer sh really shortly, the Ingvi Malmsteen single coil set That's from Seymour Duncan. Okay, my answer is I like the original old Strat pickups, like on this one, which is the original. And the reason for that it's because it's um, so transparent <laughs> and does the hudel hudel all this uh, classic things. Um, and the only copy that. I like, besides of that, is my own signature pickup set with Andreas Kloppmann, who is just a friend. I'm not getting any money from this, uh, but in return, I torture him with <laughs> questions. <laughs> so, so. so, it's a similar thing. So I worked with Andreas for the last, I don't know, 25 years, and uh, he can kind of replicate the pickups that I wanted. And uh, yeah, so cool. this is this is my answer. Um, what else do we have? Martin Debonet. I have an RB. Ah, he has a boost, and it's oh, great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, will it be in the MX? Yes, maybe yes. We talk about this. <laughs> and so this is a good point to, to move to an X question because uh, in the last episode, I couldn't finish them all. Uh, last question here, Norbert Klein. Um, Norbert Klein. Um, hello, Thomas. Wiener Couleur. Couleur. We hear the MX for the first time. Ah, okay. Uh, when can we hear the first? <laughs> okay. Um, my Autocorrect. Yeah, my fantastic webmaster. Uh, who is also the software programmer of the MX, put in Wiener Couleur. Mm, I like a good... Uh, okay, anyway, when can we hear the for the first time? Um, that's a good question. Let's, I, I would say in... 
give me a, at least two months or so and then we can hear it the first time. Okay, uh, Leonie Alpha, hi guys, greetings from Croatia. Croatia. Um, I was wondering about the lifespan of the nanotube and how difficult is it to change and if it breaks. Great show, by the way, I'm loving it. Okay, the nanotube, I can, uh, hey, we have sold many of these amps and we didn't have a single failure, only one where some female singer with high heels kind of knocked through the window straight into the tube. I would have loved to see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, me and female singers on stage, every time I'm on stage, s some of them kill my cable. You know, it's because they're so excited and they come and see the guitar player and then they jump on my pedal board and, you know, it's, it's a whole mess. And high heels is a dangerous tool. Um, it's the enemy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, back to the nanotube question is, this nanotube is, will outlive you. It's a, a Russian sub-miniature tube with military specs that uh, is specified for, I don't know, 500,000, blah, blah, blah. Somewhere it's written, forget it, this tube will never let you down. You don't, we have spare tubes if you are worried, but in the end, it is, uh, it's hard soldered to PCB. Simply forget about it. This is one of the most reliable parts in the amp. Russian military spec. So this is used on missiles and it's designed to take shocks and everything. To so go to the moon. Yeah, this is <laughs> actually yeah, where it's used um, before. Um, so the last question from this thing is, what is the best online guitar school or channel to progress and play like you, Alex? online school well i'm doing online lessons so you can call me <laughs> hey that's a simple answer you know i mean if you want to play like alex contact him how can we contact you ah to facebook facebook okay yeah i mean yeah everybody that's pretty facebook. easy i during this corona thing i started to give online lessons yeah, sure uh, uh, by zoom yeah and it works Nice. It's, it's fun. It works, and I, I and I love I love to do it. So, give me a call. Just write a message in, in Facebook, and yeah. we can do it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, Julian, um, does the Oxbox affect the power amp of the Iridium um, like a proper speaker? So I know the Oxbox a little bit, and there is a load box built in. So. The Oxbox actually turns the output of the M1 into heat. Yes. And it, exactly. <laughs> ah, you can feel it. And and the, the thing is, there is a there is a speaker kind of compensation to uh, compensate or to recreate the impedance curve. And it's pretty good. Let's put it that way. In a, a real speaker is a bit more complex. Maybe you need that. I mean, you know, take it as is. It works. It works. Yeah. And um, yeah. Um, so it's actually doing that kind of job. Yeah. So next question, JB Guitar One Hundred One. How do you both? Uh, you how do you both your delays in the effects loop, serial or parallel? Enjoy your channel. Looking forward for MX. Um, how is? Do you have a, a delay pedal in there? Yeah. And it's parallel. Parallel. Same here. Yeah. So, so the reason for parallel is simple because then the dry signal is straight from input to output and the delay is only mixed on top on of top it. of it. And so you have the most punch and the best sound quality. Yeah, I like that better. So, okay, um, I have these questions from last time uh, and this is all about MPX. Sorry guys. Mick Rose was asking, is the MX concept that flexible to update firm firmware without releasing new hardware at every trade fair? Yes, um, you know, this upcoming amp that I maybe show you something downstairs, <laughs> which is not uh, available yet. We are working on for the last two and a half years and even more. Um, is it's it is like uh, the new flagship with it all programmer maybe not your cup of tea but anyway Let's people see. are people will uh, are very excited about it and 
the updates is a firmware update, even though the, the amp is all analog. Um, and so you don't have to buy hardware. We will offer a few hardware things because it's like my concept of having a system that you can expand to your personal things, like you have your private booster, and with the Amp1 you have a MIDI adapter in case you want to go MIDI, and stuff like this is also um, for a plan for AmpX. For instance, there is a power adapter that will give you 9 volt power for pedals, yeah. if you want that. So that's a thing, but it's not like every trade show you have to buy a new hardware piece for this new amp. So it's it's a, a, an update, but we will have to, um, you will have to buy a few updates because if I put all my time, money and resources into that, <laughs> I need to have something uh, to, to recoup the cost. And therefore, when I will do new amps for the new amp X, that can be this amp, that amp and other amps, I will charge you some money for it. Otherwise, I go bankrupt, and then that's that's the end. it. No <laughs> videos anymore. Yeah. So then no, <laughs> no academy of tone anymore. Exactly. So <laughs> next question on this list: Hardy O. Some guitar pedal sound also great when used with a synth. Would it be possible to play my synthesizer through the e through some effects on the amp X? Any line input there? Yes, we do have a effects loop for post effects, which is pre the internal post effects. So we can do exactly what Hardy wants. He can play the synth and the stereo out will go in the MX and then we can still use the built-in effects of the MX on top of his synth. That's the question number two. Three, Osmium Studios, we just had, um, do you think MX would be able to replicate vintage bus amps like SVT? It will be able to do vintage bus amps, yes. Um, the question is, when I will do that, not at first priority. First is the guitar player, first is me, then we expand the range of tones, but it is possible, yes. Uh, Reptile, does the MX work with Bluetooth? Um, no, we don't have a Bluetooth built in, um, but we are thinking about wireless options. Um, I cannot promise anything yet. We have a USB-C connector and this USB-C connector can go straight into uh, whatever device, your computer, and uh, communicate with that. Although knowing that wireless can be very comfortable, um, it is a thing um, that I also would like to have one day and hey guys if you have a killer programmer watching this contact me and I'm on Facebook too <laughs> um, this is like stuff um, that is on my wish list but we are a small team we have super knowledgeable guys but one thing after the other and this is why it takes long but it's done properly. And uh, if you have a killer guy, just giving the context on Facebook. Okay, next question. Uh, Steve, the pilot, does the MX connect to computer via USB-C? How does user download it? Yeah, exactly. It does connect via, via uh, USB-C. And then we have a um, website where, we can, where you can download MPS and effect sounds. Okay, question from Stefan Mandel. Will the MX software force me into using certain computer, tablet, mobile operation systems? Personally, I'd love a browser-based version so that I can, uh, that he could use Linux. Um, let's put it that way. Um, I wouldn't like to answer this question now because I understand the question, but I don't have the solution for it right now. I mean, this is even further down the line. Um, there are some ways how to deal with that stuff, but that's a little bit too early. So um, more information as time goes by. <laughs> 
Um, we have more questions here. Man, yeah, how many? Great. Okay, Bernd Dünks. Dünks. Sounds like a Tom. <laughs> Dünks. Dünks. Tell me about string height on your guitar. Well, to me, as low as possible. Yeah, but there's still some room. But it's, it, I mean, it's. It, I can play easily, yeah. nicely. As, as low as possible. And on the Andreas Paul, um, a little bit. It's kind of medium. It's not as low as possible because then I t I tend to overbend. No, I tend to uh, slip slip away. Yeah. 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 On mine, I, I, a little I guess, bit higher, right? Yeah, a little yeah. bit higher, but similar. I mean, it's it's. I mean, I don't want to fight my ass no. off. Just I play I play low, yeah. uh, 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 um, height, and I play thin. Strings. strings. Yeah, so I make my life easy. <laughs> and it makes sense. I play a little bit thicker strings and maybe a little bit higher, but you know, uh, I don't, I'm not this kind of 13 or 11. No. And, and to me, it, that's all bullshit. Yeah. All, uh, it sounds better and you have more punch. That's totally bullshit. Listen to Billy Gibbons from CC Top. Yeah, and he plays eight, and, right? Uh, seven. Seven, okay. A seven. <laughs> you can't even buy it in the, in the store. Yeah. It's, it's like a special custom Bait. kind of thing. Yeah. So this is all, if it works for you, it works. Yeah. End of story. Yeah. And here's the technical information. The thicker the string, the more bass you get. The more bass you get, the more muddy the sound gets. So yeah. uh, thin strings have a certain beauty, especially when you go overdrive, because less bass means you have more mids, more clarity. And then uh, that's, that's just the, the frequency aspect of the whole thing. And more mass is slower, which is probably great for jazz and other yeah, yeah, Sure, There's nothing wrong. And no. this is why all these different gauges exist. Exactly. But we are more or less rock players. And as a rock player, we want to bend the strings. And overbend. And overbend, you know, and play with bends. And exactly. You know, <laughs> you know, bending is beauty in rock music, yeah. and um, the feel of the string is so important. So, okay, this was the question about the height and uh, string thickness. Uh, Hunky. You know him? Yeah, I know him. Hi. Hi, Hungi. How are you? What is your favorite magic delay setting for lead sounds? Um, oh, it's off. It's off. <laughs> this is what I do. I, I don't know the time on this yeah. one. It's just... Okay. Oh. Oops. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. I don't know the, the timing because it doesn't show on the on the DD7. Um, something 400 something. Yeah, let me check. See, mine is about the same. It's just. <laughs> it's exactly the, the same. same. <laughs> okay, um, so we are on the same tempo somehow, <laughs> and we didn't, you know, we didn't do a sound check. And I mean, we didn't we, talk about it. <laughs> yeah, no, we just plugged in and we are the same. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. I just oh. have my, my modified uh, switch here that takes all, that, that makes the repeats so dark. This is original. Ah. Oh, it's also fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I play a DD2 and he has this DD7. DD7. Okay. <laughs> this is vintage. But I, I think it's probably because the, the amp one level is too high. And this is the way how you can do it on a Mercury. You plug in to the effect switch and now, it's a bit cleaner, yeah, because now the level is lower, and the DD2 cannot handle higher level, and it was on the higher on the higher output. For, yeah, yeah, for the effects level. Yeah, yeah, cool. Anyway, so this was the question about the delay. Um, Stefan Mandel. Yeah. Hi, Alex. Did you scale up the yes. higher frets? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. Where's the camera? Yeah. Where's the camera? Mm -hmm. Close to the camera. Close, close to the camera. Yeah, it's like yeah. this. Uh, from the tenth fret. 
uh, it's it's scalloped here. from here. And I I do it from from the tenth fret because you don't play chords here anymore. There, yeah. You only play solos. Right. And then I like to have uh, the control over the string. Yeah. But if the the whole the neck is scalloped down here, I have guitars they are scalloped. But if you play chords, sometimes they can get sound out of tune. Out of tune, especially on stage when you have a little bit yeah. adrenaline and, and everything. Yeah. So I started to do it from the from the tenth frets on mm -hmm. my les, on my uh, strats, and my Les Pauls actually they are not scalloped at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the years, I learned to, I'm, I'm able to do both. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, here I play non-scalloped, yeah. here I play okay. scalloped, yeah. so I, I can do both. And that's a, a, an advantage. How do you think, or how do you feel, is the sound different as a feel? How would you describe it? I have more control. Yeah. I don't slip from the string. Yeah. And I can do also things like... Yeah, just by pressing. Just by pressing, yeah. Really little, yeah. little uh, micro tuning, micro tuning, bends, yeah, yeah. By yeah. Uh, changing the pressure because yeah. you still have room to kind of pitch yeah. it up. Uh, and, and then also when 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 we play shows, you uh, when you play a show, you sweat a lot and everything, yeah. and you just have control. You know, yeah. you go, you don't slip. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Next question, Alibaba forty eight forty eight. Hey Thomas. M1 is great to replicate more expensive amps. I own a silver one. I think it has a thing of its own. Sure. Uh, I wish to be able to buy Mercury and Iridium edition. Will they be in MPX? By the way, hello from France. Okay. Oh, um, hello. Ça, bonjour. Salut. Ça va? Bonsoir. Uh, Bonsoir. Ça va? Okay. <laughs> Très bien. Et vous? <laughs> Pas de problème. Um, so the MX will be everything. It will be this one and this one. So this is why it's the X. It, it can be. Um, and of course, um, all the amp ones they have their own character. And um, I, I can already kind of replicate a lot. But these amps have never been meant to be exactly 100% this that amp. With the new amp X, I can do whatever I want, also replicate some specific amp. So this is kind of getting on campus. Ah, Good. but in a way, but Good. in an all analog way with this kind of quality. So let's see. Uh, okay. Um, anyway, next question here. Uh, David Met Matei. Hi, Thomas. Where can you still get a remote one? Where can you still get a remote one? If you are in Germany, there are local stores like uh, 6 and 4 in Sulzbach. 6 and 4 is our local store. And the last time I've been there, they had like three. Um, that's the way, if you are talking about Germany, 6 and 4, like 6 guitar and strings four. and 4 for bass. Um, Sulzbach. And there are other stores in the US. We are fully on stock, so you get from Sweetwater or any American store can get you a remote one. Um, and I don't know, what, you have to find the, the internet. Um, there's still some around. And of course those people who have an, a, a remote one, I think uh, the use price is going up. And that's something important. When I created Blue Guitar, I always wanted to keep prices high. You know, and never devaluate anything. I hate it when people make blowout deals and and then you feel like I, I bought some crap because it's not worth anything anymore. Yeah. So we don't do that stuff. Anyway, um, next question here. Awesome students again. Thomas, I saw how Christian Cole got some awesome bass rock tones with Marshall clone. Could you try a bass guitar with your M1 Mercury just to see? Um, I've done that um, and I recorded that. I would never use this on stage personally because 100 watts is not enough uh, for a bass. And, but for recording on the clean channel, it sounds killer. And I heard somebody record with the Iridium 
even on a modern channel for bass, that's I, killer. I, I, I can imagine. Yeah. I can so imagine, yeah. The, it's an old traditional thing to re use guitar amps for bass recordings as well. I re amped some of the stuff that I have been releasing with guitar amps, the bass tracks, and it made a good bass sound. Okay, Norbert Klein again. Uh, Wüstling for both. <laughs> I'm looking for a great chorus pedal. What would you say is best analog? Chorus? Well, I'm not a big chorus fan, I have to say. Me too. Because <laughs> to me, they're always um, wishy-washy. Wishy-washy, especially <laughs> when, you, when you play uh, distorted yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. rhythm guitars. But for clean sounds, of course, they are yeah. great. And um, I use a simple uh, chorus from, from Boss. So, uh, Boss. Uh, CE is whatever, two or. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. And so if you ask me, the vintage guy, I used to have a CE1, the first one that came from the Roland Jazz Chorus. And uh, somebody, or oh, I forgot it, it disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it disappeared. But from what I remember, my. Holy Grail CE1 sounded very warm, and this is what I like. There's other choral sounds that I also uh, kind of find have a good quality, like TC chorus. They are more clean. Um, but on my pedal board, there is no chorus because I play a phaser. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Uh, yeah, okay, anyway. So th <laughs> this is a whistling. Uh, uh, a question and you get a whistling answer for it. Uh, this is the German inside thing. Okay, last, I think this is the last one because we are. Uh, 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 okay, Fabio, Thomas, uh, baust du den Amp X hauptsächlich wegen der Effekte? Die wichtigsten Sound bekommt man doch ohne Probleme mit dem Amp 1 hin. Uh, sieht man an den Vergleichsvideos. Okay, in English, uh, Fabio for asking, do I build the Amp X uh, mainly because of the effects? Because the, the most important sounds you get from uh, an amp one easily, um, and I've shown that shown this in the in the AB comparison videos. That's correct. No, I built the amp X because I want to have that platform that is an alternative to all the modeling guys out there. There's people that want more and more and more and a complex thing, and that. This is the, the, the idea about an amplifier that can recreate that and has a whole collection of amplifiers and pedals. Um, and you will find out one day that maybe an easy amp like this is all you fucking need, you know? So, um, but still, my personal, this is my personal thing is, my whole collection of everything here in the next room will end up in the MX, and then I can retire. <laughs> <laughs> you know that won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you know when I've done that, I have the next crazy <laughs> idea. But at least this will keep me busy for the next ten years. <laughs> so I have a plan in my life. Yeah, I'm not something lost. Something to do. You're not lost. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Next question. Um, we're gonna. Official. Hallo Thomas, könntest du was zum Tube Driver auf deinem Board sagen und warum der Switch getauscht ist? Ich habe den gleichen von Campo mit defektem Switch. Sind die beide vergleichbar vom Sound? Um, okay, this, uh, uh, he is asking my Tube Driver on my personal pedal board. Um, uh, the, the Switch is, is exchanged. To be honest, I don't care, it works, and I'm not using the switch so much because I have the looper kit, and the looper kit does switch in and out the, the pedal. So the switch is actually not used. Uh, so the tube drivers, they sound slightly different, but not dramatically. So I have a rack version, uh, and I have the, the pedal version or the pedal board, and they do kind of the same thing, and so, Hey, if the Campo one is not totally different, it should be fine. Okay, last question here. Do you have a, a what, what is it, a regret no, not purchasing a piece of gear? Some people regret not buying that one guitar or amp. Yes, 
there was a 64 Stratocaster when I bought Ooh. my 61 Stratocaster. Ooh. And this was the better guitar. This is just, was the shittier one. And I bought this because I didn't have the money for the... 64. Yeah. And the, the guitar belonged to Thomas Kretschmer of Udo Lindenberg. Now Carola, you know, changed sex. And the guitar, I still remember how good that sounds. And I have a 64 by now, but it's not as good. No. So I regret, but I couldn't afford it. And besides that, to be honest, not really. I, if I really want something, I either, I rather buy it or I can't get it because it's a 57 Les Paul that belongs to a friend of mine that doesn't sell it to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, Besides that, you know, uh, I'm happy with what I've, I've got. Yeah, me too. I just, I'm, I'm thinking, thinking, but actually, no. I never regret that. Do you have any regrets on selling stuff? Yeah, all of them. <laughs> all of them. Don't sell, don't sell your stuff. See, that's, that's, next room is full of shit just because of that, because I would regret some of stuff. And I can't, can't let loose, uh, in the next phase of my life, I have to change that because otherwise I become a messy. <laughs> and I have all the excuse to collect pedals because I'm a sound designer and that's my job. But um, yeah, I have to move on. <laughs> I sold so many guitars and yeah. I, I regret it yeah. always. Mm. Well, yeah. I think um, we have... Three more notes just to drop out. Let's do some Hendrix again. <laughs> Alex Bayroth. See you next episode. Ciao. Ciao.